Okay, let's take a look at camera focus inside of 3D Invigorator Pro for After Effects. Okay, so 3D inside of After Effects, you know After Effects does have its own camera focus control. Um, it's They call it depth of field. It's sort of a byproduct of how you set up the camera. And so in order to get that, of course, you just double click on the camera itself. And then these are the depth of field controls right here. You've got to turn it on. Uh, you've got to make sure it renders out. Um, you then have control over the aperture and the f-stop and how much blur is being applied to it. That's all fine. The only problem, of course, is that you have to, you know, be like a whiz in photography in order to control it and understand what's going on. Inside of Invigorator, if you have Invigorator applied, you'll get the same sort of control if you just turn on Use Comp Camera. So as soon as you turn on Use Comp Camera, you get the Comp Camera's viewpoint. And as you can see, it's already set up so that it's blurry in the back and um, nice and crisp in front. But sometimes it's a lot easier to set up camera focus uh, using Invigorator's own camera focus controls. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about right here. Because, all right, if you want to do After Effects focus controls, just go ahead and use them, turn on the button, and you're all done. That's, that's it. It just takes over and everything else is automatic. Um, however, as far as Invigorator Pro goes, this is how we're going to do this. So, we've got these little camera controls in the Effect Controls window. So when you apply the Invigorator and then open it up, you'll see a camera twirly. So if you click that, you get a bunch of controls for, you know, position, rotation and stuff. And then up at the top, we've got our focus and depth of field controls right there. Okay, so if you open that up and turn Enabled on, that turns it on. Now you can see with it off, everything's nice and crisp. With it on here, I've got it set up so that it's blurry, and then it gets crisp right around here, and then it's blurry again in the front. So this is called a shallow depth of field. Um, it, so in the real world, that's done using like a very, uh, a very long lens with a very shallow depth of field, very large aperture. Um, again, you have to sort of know all that and know how it combines in order to end up with a range of focus that's to your liking. So again, in, in 3D Invigorator, we've got this knocked out so that it's much easier to set up for the average guy that's not a professional photographer already. And I want to show you how to do that. Okay, it's done with blur amount right here, focus distance and focus range. That's very simple. And in order to visualize what's going on, let's go into our setup window and see exactly how this sort of thing is set up. So we're going to go in here and um, when you're in these controls you know you'll have your 3D preview window right here I've got the camera selected and the tumble tool selected so we can very easily move this thing around and in order to see the depth of field I either have to do a render test like this and um, oh, I've got it set to ray trace right now that's okay uh, or I can set to uh, I can turn on auto render and then what will happen is that as I move it around you see it goes crisp and then when I let it go it updates and uh, ray traces that thing out very quickly for us. So that's how this is going to work. Now in order to see what's going on here you, you know you're looking at it from the camera's viewpoint but in order to see what's going on let's change that I'm going to turn this off and switch it to a two view horizontal or two view vertical. Alright, that'll give us a top and a bottom. Okay, there we go. So what we have here now is, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. You see this is the view from the main camera. See there it says main camera. This is the view from some other user camera which we can set up. Now again, using camera and tumble, if I rotate this around, you see, you see that little guy, if you look closely, that looks like a camera. Um, if you zoom in on this, and I'll hold down spacebar to track and then slide it over. There you go. You see, there's the camera, just like that. So now I'm going to zoom back out and hold down spacebar to track over again. And now with the tumble tool selected, you'll see what we're getting at is um, if we look at this right from directly behind the camera, you see how the objects are laid out in this diagonal the same way that they're laid out here. So if we um, if we zoom in on this, you'll see that what we're looking at is this is the main camera so it's like we're looking right from the camera's viewpoint you know and um, when we look at this from the side though you see that we really have three things that I want to point out to you okay um, what we have is we have these two rectangles these two green rectangles and what they represent is the focus range if we look at this completely straight from the side and then go to our um, 
our camera controls. Now the camera controls appear down here in the set controls. So as soon as I click on here where it says camera, then we're going to get the, uh, the camera controls and I'll pull this over to the side to where our camera focus controls are sitting. Now if you're used to like Pro Animator, this is exactly the same place that they are. Um, and that's why they appear here. It's not just sort of weird that they're sitting off to the right. Um, there's a reason for that, but um, if you've never seen Pro Animator, you wouldn't know it. Anyway, so camera focus control right here. Uh, we've got that same blur amount, focus distance, and focus range. So the focus range is what sets the distance between these two um, green rectangles. So anything inside of here is going to be in focus, and then when it goes outside of there, it goes out of focus. So these objects will be out of focus, and these objects will be out of focus, and then it gets it goes from out of focus into full focus, and then out of focus again as it goes between these two rectangles. So you see if we pull the focus range down really tiny like this, and then we're going to render out, we're going to do a test render for the main camera like that, you'll see how this sphere that we're see you see how it's in between these two rectangles, this sphere is the only thing that's in focus. Everything else beyond it or in front of it is out of focus. So if we wanted to increase this focus distance, uh, say we put it right about here maybe, well let's put it on the other sphere, so it's about right there, yeah there we go, so now that other sphere which is going to be that one there is the is where our focus is sitting. So now when we do our main, uh, render out our main camera you can see that that, that little sphere is still in focus and everything else is out of focus beyond it, right? In front or behind it. Got it. So you see how that is going to work. That sets our focus distance by lengthening or shortening that guy right there. And our focus range is set to expand or contract based upon this distance. So you see it's just super easy to, uh, to set this guy up. So let's see. Right here, um, if we want this to be in focus, let's pull this down like this. And you see what I'm doing when I'm rotating this is I'm trying to get it so that these rectangles are about the same width. You see, if I'm looking at it completely like this, it's not giving me exactly, I'm, I'm just trying to estimate about where the center of this would be. I could actually flip it up and down, but this is pretty easy the way it's set up. So if we do this and then set the focus distance so it's pretty much right on that um, center thing. Oh, by the way, the focus distance is this red line. <laughs> if you couldn't have figured that out on your own. And uh, and then I can set the focus range a little bit wider and do a render test. And now you'll see this is the main thing that's in focus. And these are still pretty in focus. But then they're by the time you see that you get to the f this side of the cube, it's getting a little more out of focus. And then, of course, you're just expanding the range. So if we expand the range quite a lot like this, you see you've got a much more natural effect where this is definitely the area that's in focus, but then it goes out of focus pretty easily and pretty far too. Uh, the blur amount is of course what's controlling that, so if we set this down pretty uh, low and look at it, you see it's just a tiny bit out of focus, and that's a tiny bit out of focus there. Now this is a fairly realistic look. Um, it's, it's a typical sort of portrait with background look to it. Uh, but if you increase the amount of blur going on, you can really push that depth of field camera focus look, which is super cool. And you see, no understanding how this works, it makes it really, really easy to do. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about, let's see, that's that, that's that, that. We do have a bokeh control, so um, if you click on this, you can control the shape of the bokeh that's going to, which is the, uh, it's how the out of focus blur looks. You know, if you see lighting with all those nice little lights in the background that are out of focus, you've got a control for that right here. So that really adds a lot of nice um, production value to it. And the last thing here is use camera tumble center. Now, you'll notice that this little red line is going to jump when I turn this use camera tumble center on and off. But what this does is it sets it exactly at the center right there of where the camera is moving around. And sometimes that makes it really easy um, to set up the focus. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Um, depends on if it is rotating around an object or not. So if it is rotating around a specific object, it's pretty easy to set that, uh, especially when you're using your view controls like this. Say you wanted it to uh, rotate right around this object. So you select that guy and then go up here to view and you say 
fit selected. So that's going to snap that object to the center. And once you've done that, you can then back it out like this. And if I do a render test on that, you'll see how, whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot to set it to the use camera tumble center, right? So here we go. See how the center of focus is all is way up there. But if I turn on use camera tumble center, you see how the center of focus snaps down right to the center of that little guy right there. So let's reduce the focus range and render out the main. Um, this is getting a little difficult to see. There we go. So once we do this, you see how the cube is perfectly in focus. There's a little bit of focus on either side of it, and then it gets increasingly out of focus in this direction and that direction. So if you're trying to set up a keyframe animation, it makes it super easy to pick an object, do fit selected, move your, key, move your timeline, pick another object, do fit selected, and then back these things out, and your camera will just move from one object to the next um, real nicely without having any trouble at all and you'll be able to set up your keyframe animation that way. So there you go. Uh, so remember how to work that, okay? You can you can see this by going into a two view, just a two view vertical. We'll give you these top and bottom sort of views. Um, and then in order to set the turn the camera controls on, you show the set controls. If you don't see them, you can come up here to the panels menu and choose set controls right there and then uh, click on camera set because camera set will show you the set controls for the camera camera focus is at the right end like that now all these things you don't have to turn them on here you can turn them on the effect in the effect controls window too so you click OK and you're back here and there they are camera focus depth of field enabled or disabled just like that you see everything's exactly where it was when we left the scene from the setup window okay so I hope that helps you uh, it's pretty easy to do. Like I said, if you like the if you like the use comp camera method of doing things, you can just click on that, and that takes over. Otherwise, setting distance and range should be pretty clear now. And here's where you turn on the bouquet, um, just like that, and you'll be able to get your really nice bouquet tile type of rendering. Okay, so there you go. Go have some fun and create some really cool camera focus effects.